All right, so I want to get even more detailed with this empirical rule, okay? Um, so I'm going to redraw this curve. <clears throat> so let me see how big. I'm going to make it nice and big, as big as I can. And I'm going to get even more detailed based on what we just did. We can get even more detailed. Based on these percentages that I know, I can get even more detailed. So... Uh, why can't that? Hold on one second. So very important. So anytime you hear like something regarding um, mean, standard deviation, oh, I would like to take that bigger. Mean, standard deviation, um, and then percentages, you're typically using the empirical rule we're normal distribution as long as we're normally distributed so let's get detailed right we said the center was the mean one standard deviation above was mu plus sigma mu plus two this is two standard deviations above the mean three standard deviations above the mean one standard deviation below the mean two standard deviations below the mean three standard deviations below the mean and we said you know the empirical rule so detailed empirical this is normally distributed data um, I'm gonna get specific now so what I use green first so we said within one standard deviation above the mean or, or of the mean 68 percent right 68 percent of all data values lie between or within one standard deviation of, of the mean one below and one above well because this is a symmetric curve if from here to here is 68 percent what if I want to cut it in half and get even more detailed and determine, well, from here to here and from here to here? Because it's a, a symmetric bell-shaped curve, I can take 68 and divide it by 2. That means that 34% of my data values lie between approximately 34% from here and here. So now I'm going to get even more detailed, right? We said that, <clears throat> what color did I use? Within two standard deviations, 95% of the data values that were there. So let's go ahead and do that. So from this location to this location, 95% of the data values lie from here to here. Well, don't forget that I already used 68% here, right? From here to here, was 68%. So what's left to go outside of that? Well, 95 minus 68 is equal to 27. So 27% has to be split between this hole or this empty spot and this empty spot. So I'm going to cut that into half. 13.5. So approximately 13.5% here and approximately 13.5% here. Okay, so again, from this red you know, location to this red location, two below to two above, 95% um, of the data values are between those two, but 68% was used up. So I had to subtract the 68 and then divide by two to get outside of that. Let's go three standard deviations of the mean. So let's keep going. Okay, so from three below to three above, what did we say? Approximately 99.7% of from here to here. Approximately 99.7%. But again, I already used from here to here 95%. So I have to, I'm going to take my 99.7% and subtract from that 95 to get what's left. 4.7. 4.7% has to be split between this empty spot and this empty spot. So let me divide it by 2. 2.35. So approximately 2.35% is in this empty spot and approximately 2.35% is in this empty spot. I'm still going, I'm not done, right? Because I'm filling up this whole curve and 100% is from, you know, all the way over here because that goes on forever to all the way over there. So what is left? Well, 100% is the total and I already took up 99.7%, right? So I have 0.3% to split between this empty spot and this empty spot. So I'm gonna cut that in half now. 15 or 0.15%. So in this spot, I got approximately 0.15%. And 
and in this empty spot I get approximately 0.15% to now you know deal with my whole um, uh, situation here okay now I can actually ask specific detailed questions if you were to add up all of these percentages though it should add up to 100% of the data values so now I'm gonna ask what percent why this is always so big. Now I'm going to be detailed. What percent of all IQ scores lie between? Okay, so um, since we're doing IQ scores, let's just put those values on here again. So the center was 100, 115, 130, 145, um, 85, 70, and 55, right? So let me ask. What percent of all IQ scores lie between 115 and 130? Well, that's not a difficult um, case because I already split up all these percentages. So I'm going between 115 and 130. So that's this little space here, approximately 13.5% lie there. So um, I want you guys to realize, you know, I can get really, really detailed. What percent of all IQ scores lie between, let's do 70 and 115? So approximately. Now, 70 and 115. So 70 is two standard deviations below the mean, but 115 is one standard deviation above the mean. So that implies that I need to use this detailed kind of situation here. But I already split it up into the, uh, these separate percentages. So all I have to do now is add approximately 13.5 percent plus from 70 to 115 so 13.5 34 and 34 plus 34 plus 34 so approximately so technically 68 plus 13.5 right percent 81.5 percent um, lie between so 81.5 percent lie between 70 and 115 Let's get even more detailed. What uh, percent of all IQ scores lie or are, let's say, are greater than 145? Uh, is that a special IQ score? They say that that's a unique, very high IQ score. So what percent of all IQ scores are greater than 145? Well, here's 145. What's greater than that? Approximately 0.15%. And that is a very small percent of IQ scores, greater than 145. So obviously I can ask any or all kinds of questions regarding this um, from any location to any location. But this is still all just the empirical rule for normal distribution.